previously during the investigation. These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. Who are you? Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees, a carpet with red leaves, a strange doll, and twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, that'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. I hope they have some real coffee. I really need some coffee. Then we can head to the sheriff's office. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach?
Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh, my. We're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh, my, Mr. Morgan. You're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly, I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. Zack, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, this hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. Did you see that, Zack? 
Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going. car. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department. Really off. 
wonderful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87 minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never had a chance to see it. I know, Zach. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the Sheriff's Assistant. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent, Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, no, no. Just doing my job. I just... I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but... I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay. Let me know when things are ready. Zach, Thomas appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon.
You found the key. I hope this is the right one. Uh, you found a Siberian chipmunk this time, have you? Sorry, wrong key. A Siberian chipmunk? This species lives in northern Japan on the island of Hokkaido. They're actually quite a popular pet. So it isn't even a squirrel. But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now.
Hi. You found the key. I think so. Is this it? Ah, uh, you don't know your squirrels, do you? This isn't the right key holder. This is a Siberian flying squirrel. It's closer to a land-based squirrel. The Siberian flying squirrel is larger than the southern flying squirrel and has a standing tail while the southern has a hanging tail. But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. You sure do know a lot about squirrels. You found the key. I hope so. Uh, no, this is a sugar glider. Sorry, wrong key. The sugar glider is a small gliding possum. It has shorter hair and a longer column-like tail. You can really see its muscle definition on this image, can't you? But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. Zach, can you tell these things apart? You found the key. Is this the one you were looking for? Uh, no. This is a gray squirrel. Sorry, that's not the key. Nothing particularly special about the gray squirrel, I'm afraid. You can find them in the U.S., Canada, and in England, too. A gray squirrel. What was I thinking? But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now.
<clears throat> George, do you work out every day? Of course, <clears throat> Agent Morgan. <clears throat> Exercise keeps me healthy. I haven't missed a day since I started in high school. Now that's impressive. Remind me to get more exercise, Zack. But I can't do my full routine today without Arnold. I haven't seen Arnold around since yesterday. Arnold. He's a training buddy of mine. His partner Sylvester misses him too. If you see Arnold around, let me know, will ya? Can't finish my workout menu without him. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for him.
You found the key. That's the right one? Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in a lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually... I... Well... I... I baked them myself. Mm, that's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes sir! We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. <laughs>